This tutorial is on how to paint a really cute bunny rabbit. Now, whenever we're painting, we do need to have a good reference photo. And the reference photo I'm using for this particular painting is from Unsplash. It's free for anyone to paint from. And you can see that I've already prepared a little line drawing. We will also be using five paints for this painting, as well as six different colors. And if you'll notice my colors, I don't have black there, but I do have two blues. And by mixing those two blues with the yellow, I can create a lot of greens for the bunny's garden. And that's what we're painting right now. We're going to start by painting the bunny's garden. So to do that, I'm starting with some white, mixing in some yellows, and now taking just a little bit of that cobalt blue hue, mixing it in, but not perfectly. And I'm going to continue to add a little bit of white, and I'm going to mix a lot of my paints on the canvas itself. When I am mixing those paints on the canvas, I am trying to get lighter on the left, and as I move to the right, I'm going to put in a little bit more green. You will notice that the lines are vertical because as you are going into the garden, you can see that the grasses are vertical and I'm going to be imitating those green grasses in the background. Now, a lot of that lemon is from the sunlight. So we're creating a very warm background for our little tiny bunny to enjoy. And we're gonna have a very colorful garden. And this is the example of our garden, just the beginning of it. So now let's start painting in some beautiful flowers. And I'm thinking maybe some hollyhocks, snapdragons, delphiniums, something along that line, something that has tall height and is colorful. The colors I've started with are desaturated colors. I'm not using their full intensity because they are in the background. They are behind the bunny. So I'm starting with these desaturated colors. They're behind the bunny in the distance. And as I bring those colors forward, I'm going to brighten them. So the color I'm using right now is a mixture of phthalo blue and magenta. And by popping in a little bit of the brighter magenta in front of that phthalo blue magenta mixture, I am actually painting, well, let's say it's delphiniums, in the foreground. And I'm going to continue to build up different colors, different textures in this garden to create a lot of abstract flowers. And this is a little bit more muted blue or muted purple that I'll put on the left. And I'm going to continue to build up those muted desaturated colors. So now I'm going to start adding a little bit of that yellow. Now when we are painting, the desaturated colors are in the background and colors that are desaturated have less yellow and less red. And so now that I'm painting in the foreground, I'm putting in that magenta, I'm putting in that yellow, and that is what is giving us a sense of dimension in our lovely little garden. Okay. So once the background is dried, we can add in our little bunny. And you can see that I'm using two sheets of transfer paper. One is black and one is white because while I am transferring the bunny to the background, I need to use the black on the green and the white in the foreground. Otherwise, I can't see my image. So I keep checking to see if my transfer is okay. So let's have a look at it. It's looking really pale. Let's look at it really closely. You can see that I do have an outline, but it's not super clear. So I'm gonna have to move really slowly while I'm going along the edge. But that's cool because I'm not gonna have an obvious line there when I am finished with my painting. Okay, so our bunny is going to be white, but it can't be totally white because that would be a white blob on the paper. It would have no sense of dimension. 
So what I am doing is I'm mixing up two modified whites or desaturated whites. I have a hint of yellow or a hint of green in one and a hint of blue in the other. And these two whites are what I'm going to paint my bunny with for that initial blocking in of the color. So I am taking my fancy new filbert. It's a catalyst. I love it. I've never had a filbert before and I'm loving how it works. So that initial bit was a bit of green and this particular swipe has a little bit of the blue because the blue signifies a little shadow. Now I am wiping off the excess paint out of my brush and I'm going to pick up as bright of a titanium as I can right on the edge of it. And I'm going to drag that edge right along the top edge of that rabbit's ear to brighten it and to make it look like sunlight is falling on that ear. And with these three tones, the blue, the green, and the white, I have created the sense of dimension on that ear. Okay, so we're gonna go to the second one. The second ear is going to be a little bit brighter just because it's a little bit nearer to us. That means it'll have less blue and a little bit more green, a little bit more yellow green. So I'm mixing up my color right now. And again, with my fancy new filbert, with its rounded edges, I can scoop out that little ear, drag it down, move across the forehead, and now I've started blocking in part of the color on my rabbit. So you can see that there's a hint more yellow or yellow green on that. And this time I'm gonna pick up a little bit of blue just for the lower part of that ear, just to give it a sense of shape and dimension. And I'll smooth those colors out. And you know how a rabbit has really cute pink ears and maybe pink eyes, pink nose? Well, we're gonna be adding in a little magenta to get that pink. And I'm really happy to say that I'm mixing the colors on the palette rather than the canvas because the initial color of magenta I picked up was pretty powerful. What I'm getting on this ear is pretty good. Okay, so I do want to paint with some bright titanium white, but I have too much color in my brush. So I'm just wiping it off. Then I'm picking up some titanium just on the edge and I'm going to drag it along the top of that ear and the forehead also just to brighten it. And this is the idea of a bright ear and forehead. We're gonna brighten it more later, but this is just the beginning. So this is how I begin mapping out my little bunny. So I'm gonna go in and grab some more whites, and these are all desaturated whites with greens and blues, and I'm just gonna map out where that little face is, the forehead, the nose, the line between the nose, and the lower lip and around the eye. And I do want to say something about this filbert. This filbert has round edge, and so I get really soft transitions. It is so easy to paint a little bunny or any kind of soft creature with this filbert. I wish I had a filbert before. Guys, this is my first. I'm going to link it in below. You can check it out. It's a catalyst. It's phenomenal. <music> in the initial layer, first layer, I'm going to start brightening it up a little bit. So I will continue to brighten it as I go just because I do need to distinguish the bunny from that background which is green and the bunny is a little bit green. But now I'm going to brighten up the cheeks a little bit and around the nostrils. <music> And 
painted and it's bright enough to begin with, we're going to start getting the little feet in. And these feet are quite bright. The sun is falling down on them and the sun is going to be reflecting off the front of that chest a little bit. So we do want some brighter colors. You can see that they're much brighter than the initial colors I laid down the bunny with. And you also could see that I drug a little bit of the titanium white just along the edge also. Now with some of these desaturated whites, I'm just going to block in the chest colors. I'm not going to worry so much about how green or how blue it is. I can worry about that temperature change later. But right now I am putting in some of the muted colors on the chest. And getting that second little paw very bright also. and I'm just mixing up another mixture and you can see that there's a little bit more blue in this mixture and that's because the back of the bunny is going to be in a little bit more shadow. I'm imagining the light coming from overhead but a little bit to the left and so the lower right is going to be the darker area and that's going to be my little bit bluer part on the bunny. You'll also notice that all of my strokes are in the direction of the fur. Not that it really matters on this first layer, but it's nice to train our hand and our eye to see this kind of direction with the fur and the painting. So you just saw me mix up kind of a periwinkle blue because I need to get kind of the background of that eye in. So I'm just blocking in a little bit of color, trying to figure out where I'm going to have the window of reflection, the pupil, where I'm going to make it dark, and where are the lighter areas. So this is just the initial stage. So periwinkle blue, just the background. This is the easy part. Okay, so once I have it in, what you cannot see, well barely see, is a pink purple. And a lot of our little rabbits have a pink purple in the eye or around the edge of it. It's in their ear, it's on their nose, and that's what I'm doing now. Just creating a pink purple ring around that eye. And this is just the initial part. And a little bit on the nose also. <music> lighten that pink purple because I'm going to go all outside of the nose and I don't want the pink to be too far away from the nose. The pink is going to be in the inner part of the nose but not the outer part, the brighter pink. So just a hint of pink just on the edge and that will give a sense of a curve there that goes into the mouth. And this time I'm adding in a little bit of the black. I don't use much black but this is a black mixed in with the pink pur purple. If I put black immediately down, straight black, it would be too much of a contrast from that powdery color to the black. And so I have to build that transition up so that I can pop in just a little bit of black in key areas. I don't use much black. And again, because those underpaints are still wet, they are blending so I'm not getting a harsh line. Adding in a little bit more of that pink, pur pink purple black for the eye and now I'm going to kind of figure out where the brighter parts of the eye are and the duller parts. And again, I am looking at my reference. I highly recommend that. Having a very good reference so that you can look at the reflections, you can get the sense of shadows on your image. Yes, I am looking at my reference. And again, this is kind of a grayer form. I'm not painting with the neat just yet. 
I do believe right now this is neat black. That means pure black. And I'm just going around the outer part of that eyeball. Little bit in the pupil. But that periwinkle blue underneath now looks pretty cool against this really dark black. And now we have the center focus of our painting. It is that eye. So we're going to add a little bit more pink just around the nose, brighter pink, and a little bit around the eye. I'm sorry I didn't zoom in on this, but it's there. You'll see it in a minute. Okay, so now we need to brighten up the face a little bit. Just because the eye is so bright, our rabbit now looks a little bit green-blue for the environment. So we need to brighten it up, add a lot more white here and there, especially on the face, along all of the highlight areas, anywhere where the sun is going to touch, we do need to add in some of our titanium white. And yes, I am painting with the pretty close to neat titanium white, especially in the areas that are going to be touched by the sun, like on the edges of the ears and the top of the forehead, maybe a little bit across the chest. I'm brightening the area around the eye just to make sure that my eye is properly shaped. And I do want a little bit extra curve there and so I can add it. And I do a little bit more touch up after this. All I am lacking at this point is the bing, the pupil of the eye and it will be done. So I am brightening my background. The garden is looking great. I need to brighten it up because it is a little bit dull also. We will brighten it with whites and yellows and other bright colors. And there it is, a beautiful little garden for our sweet little rabbit. Guys, I hope you enjoyed painting this and if you would like the full tutorial for this, it will soon be up in my Patreon and you can come and paint with me. And until then, click on that subscribe, wave hi, make a comment below, and I will see you again.